way to go. Um, yeah, we, we just discussed, you know, the different vaccines and what categories. Um, I know in, instead of touching upon the percentages and, you know, which one is more, okay, if you, if you, if you could wait, um, which do you like, you know, does efficacy actually like, I know efficacy matters, but if you can explain to us what exactly we're talking about when we say efficacy and mm -hmm. all these numbers, like, oh, this is 95% effect, uh, you know, the efficacy of this particular drug is 95% and this one is 66. So I'm not going to take that 66%, but we, we, we just look at it as numbers and we think that, oh, 66 is lesser than 95. So I would rather not get vaccinated and wait till I get the 95, but you know, we were talking about this before we started the podcast as to um, how, why that 66 is actually as effective as a 95 or, um, you know, it, it has much more diverse um, testing sample, like when, when they underwent yeah. the study. So if you, if you could tell us about, you know, the whole concept of efficacies and how, you know, they do, how, the, how the companies or how the pharmaceutical companies or the organizations, yeah, determine what efficacy is like if you could tell us about that right what i'm going to do instead of telling you i'm going to show you so i'm just going right. to share screen and i'm going to show you how it works um because i think it does a better job at explaining things than i do right yeah um and then of course if you want the link i'll probably send yes you i'll right i'll put i'll put the link in the description uh, along with you know all the details that you've uh, shared with us cool so i'm gonna just play this and mm -hmm. I should answer your question really, really well, better than I can ever say it, so. Okay. The vaccine's efficacy rate is calculated in large clinical trials when the vaccine is tested on tens of thousands of people. Those people are broken into two groups. Half get the vaccine and half get a placebo. Then they're sent out to live their lives while scientists monitor whether or not they get COVID-19 over several months. In the trial for Pfizer-BioNTech, for example, there were 43,000 participants. In the end, 170 people were infected with COVID-19. And how those people fall into each of these groups determines a vaccine's efficacy. If the 170 were evenly split, that would mean you're just as likely to get sick with the vaccine as without it. So it would have a 0% efficacy. If all 170 were in the placebo group and zero people who got the vaccine were sick, the vaccine would have an efficacy of 100%. With this particular trial, there were 162 in the placebo group and just eight in the vaccine group. It means those who had the vaccine were 95% less likely to get COVID-19. The vaccine had a 95% efficacy. Now, this doesn't mean if 100 people are vaccinated, five of them will get sick. Instead, that 95% number applies to the individual. So each vaccinated person is 95% less likely than a person without a vaccine to get sick each time they're exposed to COVID-19. And every vaccine's efficacy rate is calculated in the same way. But each vaccine's trial might be done in very different circumstances. So one of the biggest considerations here uh, when we look at these numbers is the timing in which these clinical trials were performed. This is the number of daily COVID-19 cases in the U.S. since the pandemic began. The Moderna trial was done completely in the U.S. here in the summer. The Pfizer-BioNTech trial was primarily based in the U.S. too, and at the same time. Johnson & Johnson, however, held their U.S. trial at this time, when there were more opportunities for participants to be exposed to infections. And most of their trial took place in other countries, primarily South Africa and Brazil. And in these other countries, not only were case rates high, but the virus itself was different. The trials took place as variants of COVID-19 emerged and became dominant infections in these countries, variants that are more likely to get participants sick. In South Africa, most of the cases in the Johnson & Johnson trial were that of the variant, not the original strain that was in the US over the summer. And despite that, it still significantly reduced infections. 
If you're trying to make one-to-one -one, head to head comparisons between vaccines, they need to have been studied in the same trial with the same inclusion criteria in the same parts of the world at the same time. If we were to take Pfizer and Moderna's vaccine and redo their clinical trial at the same time that we saw the J&J's uh, clinical trial, we might see quite different efficacy numbers for those. These efficacy numbers really just tell you what happened in each vaccine's trial, not exactly what will happen in the real world. But many experts argue this isn't even the best number to judge a vaccine by anyway, because preventing any infection at all is not always the point of a vaccine. The goal of a vaccine program for COVID-19 is not necessarily to get to COVID-0, but it's to tame this virus, to defang it, to remove its ability to cause serious disease, hospitalization, and death. It helps to look at the different outcomes of an exposure to COVID-19 like this. The best case scenario is you don't get sick at all. Is in between hospitalized, severe to moderate symptoms, or having no symptoms at all. In the absolute best circumstances, vaccines give you protection all the way to here. But realistically, that isn't the main objective of COVID-19 vaccines. The real purpose is to give your body enough protection to cover these possibilities. So if you do get an infection, it feels more like a cold than something you'd be hospitalized for. Right. And this is one thing that every one of these COVID-19 vaccines do well. In all these trials, while some people in the placebo groups were hospitalized or even died from COVID-19, not one fully vaccinated person in any of these trials was hospitalized or died from COVID-19. One thing that I wish that Mayor would have understood was that all so I think that that's a very, very important point to have made. Right. So, you know, like saying earlier, it might not 100% mean that you will get no symptoms or no infection whatsoever, right. um, but it will 100% mean that you're not in the hospital, that you're not right. severely sick, that you won't struggle for months on end. You know, it reduces the severity of disease right. quite a lot. So yeah, it'd be if, like a passing cold rather than, you know, having a full fledged infectious. Yeah, fever and, and that's, that's good yeah. enough. You know, that's right. good enough. Right. That's, that's yeah. actually great. Because, right. you know, we, we've, we've, we've seen so many deaths this year, you know, everybody knows somebody who passed away. It right. might not be, you know, that somebody directly, but even indirectly, I think we were speaking about this earlier. Right. Indirectly, we've all seen it. We've all seen what it's doing. Right. So any protection is better yes. than no protection. No protection. Right. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk about the phase three, what exactly happens, but you know, since you've already covered that using, you know, like picto pictographic representation, I think I don't want to get into it uh further. Um <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, you know, we've we've spoken about this, but I, I do have specific questions because uh, people have started across the world. People have started uh, uh, most, I would say some of them are OK. They're like, you know what? We've been talking about a vaccine and now there is a vaccine. I would rather go get it. And there are people who are skeptical about it. Uh, and there are a few individuals who, who don't want to take it. But yeah, instead of just talking about that, I thought, let's talk about what are the most common side effects that we've seen so far uh, in, in all these vaccines, you know, the dose one and dose two. Um, and yeah, what, what, what are the most common side effects that, that we've seen so far? So I think the most common side effects for all of the vaccines have been like a pain in the arm, you know, a little fever, mm -hmm. some chills, uh, maybe like tiredness for, for a day, yeah. maybe two days. Mm -hmm. um, we have seen some more severe side effects in quite literally one in a million. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the chances of getting struck by lightning are twice twice the NAS, you know, like one in 500,000 people are, get, are are struck by lightning. Mm -hmm. um, whereas like with the Oxford, uh, sorry, with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, oh, and the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, you mm -hmm. know, there's been quite a lot in the news about, about blood clots and right, yes, right. it is a concern. I'm not going to say it's not a concern, it is. Um, and for some countries, it has been concerning enough for them to decide that they don't want to use that vaccine anymore. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but so far, from what we know, uh, it's one in a million. It's so one person in a million. Yes, it is still one person. Yeah, yeah. It's still a person. And it's it's terrible. But it is one in a million, you know. If, if you're going to look at the efficacy of the vaccines and how right. they bring down infection, how they bring down hospitalization, how they help so many people get quite literally a new lease on life, that that number is a lot higher as in, you know, you've saved more lives. Right. You know, if it's one per million, there's 999,000 other cases where there was no problem. Well, apart right. from you know, the minor congestion, like a congested nose or right. a little bit of sniffles, a little bit of tiredness, but that little bit is so much better than actual COVID-19 infection. Like, you know, a lot of people from my family have had COVID and honestly, I wish they, they had the vaccine. They didn't right. get it yet, you know. Rollout has been slow in, in most countries, quite quite honestly, apart from I don't know, the UK, the US. Mm-hmm. Rollout, oh, and Israel. Rollout, rollout has been slow, you know, on a global right. level. It's not, it's not been the most equitable. We are trying. It's been better than it is always been. Like, it's, it's been better than we've ever seen before. We've got a while to go. Right. And, and if, if my family had got the vaccine, they wouldn't have been in the hospital for as long as they were. They would have never even seen the hospital. You know, right, like right now, India is seeing really, really high levels of COVID. We're in the Second middle wave. of a new, a new variant. Right. We don't have enough information about that new variant currently. Uh, from what I see, it's more transmissible. We can see that from the numbers itself, you know. Yeah, and more and more young person, like people uh, in their twenties and thirties, and like if, um, children and sixteen changing, and seventeen yeah. are also yeah. Are also it's it's changing, and we're gonna see that anyway. We are, but if all these people had the vaccine, I'm not saying they didn't take it. I'm saying they literally never had a chance to take it. Mm-hmm. If they had the chance, you know, we wouldn't we wouldn't see such terrible. Well, we would see the same numbers probably. That mm-hmm. I don't know about, but we wouldn't but, see those numbers of people going to the hospital. We wouldn't see the same numbers of people that are dying from it. Those numbers would be way down, way 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 down. Right. That's right. the aim of the vaccine anyway. That's the aim so far: reduce the number of hospitalizations, reduce the number of severe cases, so hospitals aren't overwhelmed. So you. Right as an individual are not so, so sick. You know, nobody right. likes being that sick. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you have the option of preventing it, it's preventable. It is preventable. Yeah. That death, that severe hospitalization, that severe symptom, it is preventable if you take the vaccine. So yeah, yeah. there are side effects. There, are, there will always be side effects. I mean, there's right. side every, effects from, every... from paracetamol. There's side mm-hmm. effects from taking your... I think in India it's crocin, you know, we, right. I mean, in India it's like, ooh, oh, you've got a headache, here's a crocin. In the UK it's like, oh, you've got a headache, here's a paracetamol. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. the same everywhere and they have side effects. They have side yeah. effects that you might not realize they do, but right. they have side effects. Every medication in the world has some form of side effect. Right. And if in the case of COVID, it's, feeling off for a day or two or even a week from just getting the vaccine that's way better than being in the, in the hospital for two or three months exactly and, and, then, and, and uh, sorry you were saying no 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 no. go ahead go ahead yeah i was saying with hospitalization you know after two months you'll come out of hospital you might not be the same you know your your legs will get tired more you right. you're gonna have to build your tolerance for walking for for exercise for everything you know, it's not like, right, I came out of the hospital and now I'm fine. Mm. A lot of people aren't coming out of hospital fine. A lot right. of people still have loss of smell, you know, right. three months later. Mm-hmm. And the, these are all things that are preventable. So right. if you ask me, if you get the chance to take a vaccine, take it. Honestly, take it. People mm. around the world are not getting the vaccine. You know, somebody else right. would have been elated to have that vaccine. Somebody who died their family would have been absolutely grateful to get that particular dose of vaccine that, you know, somebody else has just said, nope, 
don't trust it, don't believe it, don't want it. Right. Somebody else would have killed for it. Right. So if you're in a position to take the, the vaccine, I really, really urge you to consider it and, and go get it, get it done. You know, it doesn't only save you, it serves, it serves the community. Right. It really does. It, it, it saves people that can't get the vaccine as well, you know, for whatever right. reason, some people are allergic to some of, some of the ingredients. Mm -hmm. So you're protecting them as much right. as you're protecting yourself. So yourself, yeah. Go out, right. do it, get it. Mm -hmm. And uh, are these vaccines safe uh, for pregnant women and lactating mothers, uh, new mothers? And because, you know, um, I'm not sure if there's, uh, I, I, I think there's ongoing research right now, but the, f the few things that came out in the beginning, like in, in the late 2020, um, it was more for, uh, I don't think they recommended that for pregnant women and they had to take it at their own risk. So do you think these vaccines are safe or what kind of vaccines are safe for pregnant women and uh, lactating mothers? Well, I think with pregnant women and lactating mothers, now I'm no expert in this, but I think, you know, a lot of, a lot of mothers would not want to take that risk. A lot of mothers would be happy to take that risk, mm -hmm. but I, th I think that trials are still ongoing on it. Like we don't mm -hmm. have a hundred percent sure answer right. and right. we, we probably will. But maybe not so soon. Not not so soon in the in in the future. We're mm -hmm. not going to have an answer to that tomorrow. Right. Um, is a take at your own risk right now, and it probably will be for a while. Um, mm -hmm. So I unfortunately I don't have an answer to that. Mm -hmm. um, maybe another expert does. Um, I know a lot of a lot of countries started out with not not providing the vaccine as in like it was kind of not recommended for for free use if you're pregnant mm -hmm. um there have been a lot of cases where women have used a wait and see approach uh, i think there was a there was an article where was it i think it was in the new york times or washington post or something about this woman mm -hmm. who got fired uh from her job because she didn't want to take the vaccine but she didn't want to take the vaccine because she was trying to conceive she wanted to be pregnant. She didn't know at that time, there was no information on whether or not the vaccine has an effect mm. on conceiving. Right. Um, to date, all the vaccine trials have been conducted on, as far as I know, on non-pregnant people. On non -pregnant. Right, right. Um, but, you know, we, we haven't had the chance to research it fully yet. Right. So, so I mean, I, I have for it. right. I, I have friends, uh, like I have friends and like uh, wives of friends who, some of them have like they chose to take that risk. I mean, they're okay. Like, thank God, uh, they're 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 okay and they're and they're glad they took it. And some of them are waiting because, you know, they're not sure whether you know they want to. They don't want to put themselves at risk and their babies at risk. So, um yeah it's i mean i would say probably in that situation it's excusable to not take a vaccine although they really want to but because there's a and a lack of data uh, as to uh, if it's safe for women who are lactating or pregnant women um it's i think the more uh which probably wait till we get the results from these studies um, yeah, yeah definitely and, um, and what about uh, in children I think what it will change. Yeah, we will see that data someday. I just don't know when that day will be. Um, mm -hmm. If the data is already out, I'm sorry, I'm not aware of it to date. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. There might be some data on it. They, there, I, I don't know. The last I knew, there was no data. Um, mm -hmm. But that's not obviously. That's not to say that there won't be any data when this video is released. Um, right. But. Uh, if there are any changes, I can I can give you a heads up and let you know, and you know maybe maybe we can put a little bit in the description or something. But right. Um, but as of now, I'm not sure if there's any okay. data. Anyway. Okay, and the same goes for children too, right? There's again not much data whether because I don't think uh, they testing children as much as they're testing uh, young adults. No, they started adults. testing. I think Pfizer, Moderna. Okay. Um, oh, I think one of them actually put out some information uh, on in March, 31st of March, exactly, mm -hmm. uh, about 
they use in children. So okay, Moderna is being tested in children already. Mm -hmm. um, as is AstraZeneca. Um, and then earlier this, on the 31st of March, here you go. The Pfizer and BioNTech vaccine is highly effective in adolescents. So depends mm. how you define adolescents, I guess. Different, yeah, again, that, that changes uh -huh. kind of from country to country. But yeah, yeah that's, that's good news. That's good news. Any news is good news right now. Yeah, so so it, it will be there. You know, Johnson & Johnson has already started trials as well. Mm -hmm. um, so soon, you know, uh, soon it will be there. Uh, Moderna has started testing in babies and young children. Mm -hmm. um, in December, they were already trialing in adolescents and they define adolescents between 12 and 18 years of age. Mm -hmm. So the trials have been ongoing, you know, they are testing it for children. Uh, but again, it's... Wait, wait, uh, wait. Uh, I'm sure <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm pretty positive it will, it will mm -hmm. be fine using children um right but yeah let's see and uh, you know we uh i think right now like um in in the early 2020 when we started off we now have a lot of variants and a lot of mutations happening so how effective um, effective are these vaccines for um the new strains that we have right now and the new strains that are going to come up in the next few months how effective do you think are these vaccines uh well, with with how effective I think they will be, I think that actually holds no ground. Um, mm -hmm. Because until we actually have the information, we're not going to know. Mm -hmm. But having said that, you know, they're all they're all based on the same virus in a way. Yes, they're variants mm -hmm. of the virus. So they they will be effective. The efficacy might go down a little bit. Mm -hmm. But like we said, the efficacy is a number right um and it's not the only number that we need to take into consideration if the efficacy mm -hmm. goes down and hospitalizations are still at an all-time low and deaths are still at an all-time low that means we're doing well, we're doing well you know right. that means that change although terrible or potentially terrible um if the, the vaccines may still be a little bit effective i would i would want to say i would want to hope i don't know if this answer comes from hope or if it's I mean, it's not actual science it's hope isn't it at this point right. but only time will tell only time will tell mm. um but in the meantime if you do get your vaccine social distance wear a mask wash your hands do all the things guys do it all right. because because the vaccine only protects you it doesn't protect somebody else who's not vaccinated right Right. Um, before we move on to some misconceptions, I thought we should, we, we should talk about uh, the limited amount of uh, treatments that we have, like the remdesivir and um, alternative therapies like the plasma treatment and things like that. So can you tell us something about um, remdesivir, if it's, if it's something new, how long has it been um, and you know how, how, that's, how that's working? And I know it's become in the last couple of months, it's become, you know, the drug of choice it's in a few countries. Um, it's, old. it's rare. It's very rare. Right. As in, like, we've used it so much in certain countries. It's very, very rare. Um, mm. So I really like this question. And unfortunately, the answer is a little wish-washy. Um, mm. Because depending on what country you're in, uh, the treatment available and the treatment mm. being used is different. Mm -hmm. So, for example, remdesivir is being used quite a lot in uh, the US. It's the first line of treatment, as far as I'm aware, in India, for example. Mm -hmm. But in the UK, we don't, we, we've only ever said it's for use in compassionate. So, so it's only available for compassionate use, i.e. if nothing else is working, then we will try and give you remdesivir. Mm -hmm. But having said that, that's what we were doing for peak one. For peak two, seems like everybody got remdesivir. Why? We have no idea. Uh, seems like it is working, um, which, I mean, if it's working, why not, right? We don't, if somebody's severely ill and you can do something about it, or you think you can do something about it, you try it. And that's that's what we're doing in the 
the medical side of things. Mm -hmm. uh, no, please don't in any way me don't 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 take this as in any way as me saying, oh, if you're not sure, drink as much alcohol as you want. Please don't. Or if you're not sure, drink bleach. Please don't. This is not what I'm saying. I'm just saying right. from a medical perspective, based on what we know works, we're doing everything that we can to give people to 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 make sure that people are still you know living and breathing and, right. Right. and that they'll be okay but again in no means am i saying do something funny please 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 don't please don't um but yeah that that's that's for remdesivir um i think a lot of countries are also using vitamin d um right so again, that's quite interesting. I think uh, my family was given vitamin D in India when, when they were infected. I've got a friend who's a pharmacist in the UK who's mm -hmm. also giving out vitamin D. Um, I don't know how much it helps, mm -hmm. um, but at least in the UK, you know, we're giving vitamin D just kind of as a, we, we give it to a lot of people. Um, because in the winter we literally have no vitamin D. Like yeah, I, I take I take multivitamins, right? Um, because of the weather and the climate. Yeah, especially for people that are you know darker skinned or mm -hmm. you know brown, black, um, any people of color, we really struggle with no sun. So right. vitamin D is definitely being used, as far as I am aware, um, in the UK as well. Same with India. I'm not sure about the US, but I'm. I, I don't I, I actually don't know about the US I couldn't I couldn't even guess but if I were mm. to guess it's probably they are probably you know using it yeah yeah no multivitamins is um they, they are a big thing here too because of you know the seasonal affective disorder so it's like a um a lot of things so it's um like yeah I think it, it, it just kind of if you bones. don't if, if you're not out and about in the sun you probably are vitamin d deficient therefore they'll give exactly. it to you in any case right. and like even in a country like India you know if it's so miserably hot, you're probably not going out as much. Oh, so no. yeah. you're probably not getting your vitamin D, your recommended daily mm -hmm. dose of vitamin D. So it's it's possible that it's just kind of... No, there they are. Yeah, no, people are like when I was in India, I was prescribed vitamin D because, um, you know, all of us are working indoors in, in AC and stuff. So we, we come in and we go out when it's, it's already dark. So yes, um, and... There's a lot of lifestyle diseases that are popping up and vitamin D, like taking supplements, um, like, you know, I've had low back pains and um, the doctor suggested that, uh, yeah, I think vitamin D definitely helps because, uh, you know, we don't, we, we've oh. been sitting, sitting oh. for long hours and, and things like that. So it, it kind of impacts. So taking vitamin D does a lot of help. Um, it that definitely helps um, yeah. with a variety of conditions. Yes. Yeah, I actually am supposed to be taking uh, iron tablets, but I don't do it. <laughs> I don't, well, I have been recommended by a doctor to do it, uh, but I don't like the side effects that come with it. So I just, I just end up eating what I need. Mm. So a lot of spinach. Supplements, yeah. A lot of, um, sorry. So I go, I go a little bit down the natural, natural route. Um, but again, this in no mean, in no way means you know, ignore what your doctor says and do what you're doing. The doctor did right. suggest that this is an option that I have. So um, right. speak to your doctor. If in doubt, speak to your doctor. Don't self-medicate. Even with supplements, you know, yeah. if you take what you don't need, you can end up making something worse. So for example, I have an iron deficiency. My dad has too much iron. Hmm. If I take iron, I'll be fine. If my dad takes iron, he will not be fine. Right. He will have some problem that comes from having too much iron. So speak to your doctor. That that's all I can say. Speak to your doctor. Right. Um, but yeah, with with COVID, I've, I've, I'm seeing a lot of people are getting uh, vitamin D supplementation as well. In terms of plasma, again, very interesting. In India, I think it's like compassionate use, or it's kind of if remdesivir didn't work, we'll give you plasma. Mm -hmm. um, in the UK, we've not used plasma at all. Uh, we did a massive trial mm. in the UK and we found that plasma doesn't help. So we stopped using it altogether. Um, oh, wow. 
and and that's this is why it's interesting like remdesivir for example you know the uk is using it the us is using it well the uk is kind of using it the us is using it india is using it um there are a lot of countries using it the world health mm -hmm. organization has said that it doesn't work so where do you go right from? it's not approved it's not fda approved yet so yeah so right. you know it's just we're trying what we can we're figuring out what we can remdesivir is an antiviral it's a broad spectrum antiviral so right, right. what it does is it it will it will block an enzyme um that is very very necessary for the virus the to virus replicate right, right so that's what it does essentially and a lot of antivirals will do exactly that uh you know prevent the virus from replicating so um you know, it, 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 it works, I guess, but we don't know. It, it's just confusing. A lot of countries have said different things. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of countries have completely different ways of treating things as well. Um, so like I said, in the UK, first first line of treatment is dexamethasone, which is a, uh, which is a steroid. Yeah, yeah. Um, remdesivir is compassionate use, but it looks like we're just kind of using it like it's like it's candy um in india it's it's the first thing that you get in the us as far as i'm aware it's the first thing that you get you know remdesivir uh and steroids um and then if you've got lung involvement then again it depends where you are in the world they'll give you antibiotics just to make sure that the covid does not lead to another infection right that's bacterial it's given more kind of as prophylaxis just in case something mm worst happens right so right. if you have mild covid and you have no lung in involvement chances are your doctor will not give you antibiotics and that is a good thing if people you don't want antibiotics if you don't need them uh antibiotic resistance is a real problem as well so i don't know don't feed the beast um right being the bacteria or don't feed this essentially um mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of doctors around the world are pressured to give antibiotics for viral infections. And it happens, it happens very, very often, more often than I'd like. I mean, just recently my cousin got, she had the flu, like they tested her, she had the flu and they gave her antibiotics and she shouldn't have been given antibiotics. She really shouldn't have been given antibiotics, but, you know, depending on what country you're in, they do things the differently. Right, right. And uh, this has also been another question that now people who have recovered from COVID, uh, do they still have to get vaccinated? Um, I'm no expert on this, but I've seen a lot of information about um, people that have had COVID getting only one dose of the vaccine. Um, okay. But no country has, I, I don't know if any country has started in, ha, has started vaccinating people that were already COVID infected. Um, so unfortunately, again, I don't have an answer for this from would have seen, would have heard, would have read. Um, it seems that somebody who was infected with COVID might be eligible to get at least one dose. Um, but again, sorry, no answer here either. Mm, I, I think the concern comes from, the concern comes when you know, the individual who's recovered and they want to travel, um, they either have to produce a report that they've been, uh, they are tested negative or they've been vaccinated. Um, so in that case, um, and I guess a vaccine is the cheaper alternative of the two, right. the more right. permanent one, because every time you need a test, like if I were to fly home to India today, then right. I would probably pay get... 200, 300 pounds just to get a negative test, which right. is, which is accepted by border control. Like the NHS, they provide free testing anyway, but mm -hmm. those tests apparently are not the ones that they're looking for at airport. Right. So yeah, I think it's, it's, it's just cheaper us... for me to go get the vaccine for free, mm. then go get that 300 pound, 200 pound test. Right. Uh, every time that I want to travel or every time I want to travel in the next couple of months anyway. So, right. Uh, but sorry, don't have an answer for that either. Mm. Um, there might be information out there and again i can look it up and send you a quick message and sure sure but yeah 
Great. Um, so this is this. These are some things you know that I wanted to cover in terms of uh, COVID and you know the vaccine and stuff. Um, before we move on to talking a bit about science communication, do you have anything that you want to you know share with the audience and share with everyone uh, that you know we might have missed? In, in this yes, conversation. I've, I've not missed this in the conversation at all. But if you can get the vaccine, get it, guys, get it, right. genuinely get it. You if for any enough. reason you are yeah. hesitant, and I mean hesitant, not anti-vax, hesitant, as in are mm -hmm. on the fence, don't know what to do, feel free to get in touch with me. Uh, I might take a while to respond, but I will get there. Um, but again, if you're vaccine hesitant, if you're anti-vax, please, guys, don't don't bother me. Please, I don't, I, I, I'm sorry, but please. Yeah, you would rather um, direct your energies towards something that's important than, yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather speak to someone who's coming in with an open mind and genuinely, right. genuinely feeling hesitant, like, hmm, I'm genuinely not sure. Right. I don't know where to look for the information. Then yes, by all means, contact me. Uh, we can talk. Uh, but if you are legit one of those people who's like, right, can't do, won't do, won't want any vaccine, don't believe in vaccination. Then no. Yeah. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, I don't think uh, that's the audience for this kind of a podcast, but you never know if they're open to it. Um, I've yeah, had people going... come crap at me for this already. Okay. Um, and um, it was mainly kind of well, if you don't know what's happening, then how do you know what's happening? And I was like, you know, I trust the vaccines. I trust the science. I understand the science. I'm okay taking it. And yeah. and he, he the, the, well, I'm assuming he was a he. Um, this person just didn't want to listen, just wanted to talk. And I was like, well, okay, you've done your talking. You can leave now. That's fine by yeah. me. Um, yeah. But no, if you are genuinely, genuinely vaccine hesitant, genuinely concerned, right. you know, feel free to contact me. Um, yeah, I'll be putting or, your uh, Twitter feed, your Twitter link, your handle, yeah, and, yeah, you know, uh, the, your blog. In yeah, the show. So. Yeah. Um, or, you know, there are so many amazing people out there that are talking about um, yeah. the vaccines and why you should get vaccinated. I definitely recommend Science Sam. Um, she was based in Canada. She's got a whole government initiative going. Really, really mm -hmm. good. Um, then there's King Gutter Baby um, <laughs> on Instagram. Fantastic. Um, she she actually works on the Moderna vaccine. She works for Moderna. Uh, so okay. she can also provide you with really good insights. She's been on the news. She's been doing really, really well. Um, if you're on Twitter, you want more information, you know, there's Peter Hortez, like Professor Peter uh, Hortez, there's, there's uh, Viruses Immunity, um, mm -hmm. like that's the Twitter account. Um, yeah. There are so many people out there providing really good information, uh, you know, look for that information, feel like contact them, contact me, contact yeah. anybody that you feel comfortable contacting. Uh, and just a side note, a blue tick doesn't mean they always know what they're talking about. Right. Just gonna put it out there. You know, Donald Trump had a blue tick. We all know how that went. So, a blue tick does not normally always mean they know everything about. They're a legitimate right. source of information. They might be for certain things, but not all things. So, look for the epidemiologists. Look for the science communicators. Look right. for um, people that are actually involved in vaccine manufacturing, vaccine um, administration, speak to your doctors. There's so many people you can talk to about your own hesitancy. So get the help, right. you know. Right. Why, why right. stay on the fence when, you know, you could easily right. prove it? Yeah, I think we have, we, ha we do have more access than we think about it. Like, you know, the social media, like you want to use social media to spread misconceptions and your doubts but you can probably use it to find the right person and do a bit of search find out you know who's legit and who's not and then get in touch with them or you can just contact your local doctor who is yeah. you know i think it's much, much easier they're, they're actually meant to help you with this you know contact right. your doctor if you live around a pharmacy ask your pharmacist you right. know 
they can also give you some advice um, depending on what country you are so in the UK you can go to your pharmacist and they will give you information about vaccines no problem um, somebody who just sells drugs may not know everything about no, it but, yeah yeah find who you're comfortable talking to and talk right. to that person. Right. Uh, King Butter Baby absolutely love her adore her um, you know she gives out she 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 gives out really really good information same with Science Sam um, you know they're really, really good sources of information. So mm -hmm. go seek them out. Seek out whatever help you need. Um, right. and, and get that vaccination, guys. Get that vaccination. Vaccination. I know. I, I, I just hope you know, that's, that's the take home message of this, this video. And if, you know, if there are at least people who are, you know, are, are on the fence can get convinced uh, with the science behind this. And um, they, should, they should probably go and get their next um, vaccine registration done as soon as possible. Yeah. Because yeah. I think it's pretty much open to people above 50 in every country and very soon um, people um, in, in, in the States, they're gonna open it to youngsters too. I'm not sure of the date because um, it's it is different from state to state. It differs, the dates are different and the, the laws are kind of different from state to state. But yeah, they're very soon gonna open up uh, registrations for um, people above 16 or 18. Um, yeah. So I think, yeah. If you can get yeah. it, go get it, guys, go get it. Right, right. Um, yeah, before we, we wrap up this, uh, since you know, you're an active science communicator, uh, what, what is science communication to you? And uh, I, I know in the beginning you mentioned as, like, as to why you made that shift, as to why you wanted to get into this. But um, I asked this uh, to my guests who are especially um, in the scientists or in the field of science and also science communicators. Um, what is science communication to you? And um, what would probably get to the next part of the question once you answer this? For me, like I'm all for all the sciences, but I am definitely more of the biology based, mm -hmm. um, health based um, science. Well, I'm not technically a scientist. I'm, I've studied science. I've done biomedicine right. at university, but I'm, I don't have a PhD essentially. Mm -hmm. um, but to me, if you can provide somebody with information that can better their lives, which in my case is communicating about health and disease uh, and preventable health and preventable disease. That's what it means to me. All of my communication is around health. It's not all sciences that I focus on. I mean, I could mm -hmm. potentially talk to you about other sciences, but I'm very much about life sciences and health sciences. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, if, if you can prevent diabetes, if you can prevent cancer, if you can prevent cardiovascular disease, you know, why aren't we doing more? Why aren't we actually being proactive about health rather than being reactive about health? You know, right. it's like, if, for example, if we have symptoms, only then do we go to the doctor right. and get the help that we need. But why not prevent those symptoms from happening in the first place? Right. You know, it preventative yeah preventative secondly, secondly if you're based in the u.s you save a lot of money a lot of money you know yeah. like Healthcare people in the u.s pay two thousand dollars a week mm -hmm. a week yeah. for, for for insulin if you can bring that number down why not right and it doesn't have to be like you don't have to make the changes overnight go slow you go with what you can do but every day that you make that right choice for your body, you're you're in the right direction, and that's that's good enough. You know, that's a good start. Uh, so that's kind of what I like and what mm. I do within science communication. Um, and then in terms of what I work on, as in like paid work, I do quite a lot of science writing. Um, mm. So I write about science and health essentially so if you go through my blog site that's what you'll see probably in the past like in the past year everything about covid um everything that i've written about covid is more or less on my website 
unless it's you know a guest post yeah. or whatever um but I've put out a lot of information on my own website about COVID all things COVID um you know I've had a readership of about 30 35,000 people now right. uh I've been giving lectures about it I've been I'm talking to you about it which yeah. I'm loving um you know that's but that's science communication for me I know a lot right. of other science communicators communicate about space science I've got a, I've got a big yeah. following of space right. scientists and and absolutely amazing what they're doing um I've got a lot of um friends within chemistry that are doing right. science communication as well mm -hmm. um so again their science communication is slightly different to mine um but again you know it's it's still in the same realm of communicating communication yes yeah, yeah. Um, which is why I like that because you know everybody um you know instead of just narrowing down to one simple definition it's always good to get that understanding of science communication because to each their own like the way I communicate the way like I, I use Twitter and I am I'm using this platform right now um, yeah. and uh, like you know you write about it and, and you talk to people about it and there are people who just use Instagram just, just you know pictographic representation so I started out doing that actually I started mm -hmm. off on Instagram and then I realized it was kudos to anybody doing it but right. it's a lot of work it's a lot of work yeah having to make everything look pretty and having an aesthetic I'm not saying that's what everybody has to have right I'm just saying it's it's a lot for me to do mm -hmm. at my own time right. uh so I find that really really difficult and I, I did for for two months maybe every mm -hmm. alternate day I was posting something mm -hmm. and then I started going crazy like there was too much pressure on me and I was like you know right. what I'm not yeah. enjoying this anymore if I'm forced right. to put out something that doesn't feel a hundred percent to me then you know maybe it's not for me so then I switch gears and now I do it on Twitter and then I block site right. and then I I also do like occasional um you know podcast appearances like for you or like mm -hmm. I've done with uh the addictive brain I've done like an Instagram live um mm. you know yeah so that kind of thing it works it works really well but I find audio um and words a lot easier than I do making visual things right. every single day um yeah again not to say that I don't do it I do it for some clients uh but doing it for clients plus doing it for myself is a little much for me that's so. a different yeah great, so great. my Instagram is kind of just asleep for the most part right now mm -hmm. um but having said that if you are interested in SciComm uh check out SciComm chat so it's hashtag SciComm chat mm -hmm. on uh Twitter um so I actually host it every week. Um, it's a oh. whole bunch of science communicators coming in and just chatting with each other about science communication, oh, wow. about how we can make it better. And it, it includes all, all forms of science communication. So if you're in physics, chemistry, um, mm. physical sciences, uh, space science, biology, medicine, you know, you say it, we communicate. Like we have a chat every Wednesday at 6 p.m. GMT. So. I I don't know what that is in your time, sorry. Um, mm. But around 6 p.m. I do that every every Wednesday. Um, mm -hmm, and it's so so follow the hashtag Psycom Chat and then for the actual account, uh, mm -hmm. it's Psycom Club it, or it's Psycom dot Club, one of the two. Um, but if you if you look up Psycom Club on Twitter, you'll you'll find cool. that account. I'll probably check that out. Yeah. And then, yeah, hop in, have a conversation. It's it's genuinely really fun. We have on air, on any given day, we've we've now got um, about ten to fifteen people coming in and communicating mm -hmm. throughout that hour. So I do oh, it for wow. an hour, sixty-seven GMT. Mm -hmm. um, so that's like one of my other little babies, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, so if I'm not working on the shared microscope, I'm working on Psycom Club. Um, mm -hmm. I do have an Instagram account for it, but that's been asleep as well. It's Instagram, mm -hmm. it's asleep at this point. But yeah, if you're on Twitter, if you use Twitter quite often, definitely right. check it out. Sure. Um, yeah. It, it, like the whole community comes down and gives advice. And that's why it's really nice. Like it, you don't just right. hear from me, you hear from everyone. Mm -hmm. um, 
So like last week we were talking about accessibility in science communication. Mm -hmm. So, you know, thinking about the colors that you use, the fonts that you use, um, you know, are you being inclusive to entire communities like, you know, the black community, the brown community, the Asian community, um, mm -hmm. the LGBT community. So it's just kind of, it's just making it accessible. Uh, if you're using images, do you have alt text on them? Things like that. The little things that add up to just mm -hmm. make sure that more people can take that information in. Um, right. So yeah, if you're interested in anything Psycom, I would definitely, I mean, I obviously love, I'm biased, but I think yeah, you will Yeah, that sounds it. interesting. Yeah, yeah. I'll have definitely, definitely check it out. I might be, I'm probably added to the list. I'm not sure because I am part of a lot of uh, Psycom groups yeah. and, and, and yeah. In, on, on the list on Twitter, but yeah, like sometimes I'm active on Twitter and, there, and then there are days where I'm not. So it's it's like, um, it could be one of those That days. sounds about right but, though. Twitter can be a lot, like when something's happening around the world. Yeah, but, there's, a, there's, there's a lot of information and you want to stay away from it for your own sanity, <laughs> so. Yeah, right. yeah. Uh, Twitter, Twitter takes off very, very quickly. Um, right, yeah. Anyway, this has been great. Um, thank you, thank you very much. Um, I, I hope my, uh, you know, the the viewers have, you know, some understanding of, you know, what it takes to make a vaccine, and uh, I hope they understand what efficacy is, and I hope they understand it's better to get vaccinated rather than just, you know, not getting vaccinated. Uh, and I'm going to put up the links that you sent me uh, in the description, and I'll also add your Twitter handles so people can reach out to you directly um and um yeah that's it like this is this has been great and thanks for um making time despite your busy you know busy schedules um and uh, um and and uh, others like uh, i'm i'm sure you guys are having a lot of fun and i hope you're getting to learn from the different guests that i know we've had on our channel so please feel free to write to us or tweet to us um uh, your you know you know send us your feedback we want to hear from you and if you have some topics that you would want this channel to cover, please feel free to write that. You can give us re recommendations and also recommend people that I can reach out to. Um, and um, you know, especially this particular episode, uh, uh, I think it, it's it's great to be shared among your friends, your family, and your um, you know loved ones. So please uh, feel free to share, like, and subscribe to the channel. We have you know interesting content coming up every week and we have really interesting people as our guests so um be curious uh be safe and uh, nothing is rocket science thank you for having me honestly thank genuinely you. thank you so so much i really really enjoy chatting with people about things i mean i am a science communicator i communicate i love talking um yeah. but genuinely thank you so so much for having me on here um and and like you've already said if you all need to reach out by all means, feel free to. Uh, you can also contact me through my website if you if you'd rather. Okay. That way, you'll be a little bit more anonymous. If that's mm -hmm. what you're going for, um, then by all means, do that as well, and I'll send you all the links as well. So sure, that'll be great. Thank, Thank you again. again. Thank you so so much. Yeah. And guys, get vaccinated. <laughs> yep, get vaccinated. That's that should be the take home uh, message from this you know episode if you're watching. So stay safe and. Uh, Take care, keep washing your hands, use a mask, double mask, doesn't matter, and uh, wash your hands and get vaccinated. Social distance. Yes. And social distance, yes. <laughs> and and when wearing a mask, please wear it properly. Don't wear it just about, above your nose, uh, just about your mouth. Oh yeah, guys, nose and mouth. Please cover your mouth, your nose and your mouth. <laughs> All right.